Hello everyone, my name is Brett Englund with the Haas Corporation. We're here today to talk to you a little bit about emergency shower and eye wash needs for your customers and some unique things that Haas has that can help you meet those needs for them. We're doing something a little bit different today. Uh, we're here in Haas headquarters in Sparks, Nevada. Uh, right on the other side of this wall is where all our products are made. Uh, and as you can kind of see looking around the room, we have all sorts of different products that are installed here. So our goal today is to show you some of these products problems and show you how to fix them, not just tell you about them. So with me here today, we have Justin Dunn. Justin, you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, thank you. Uh, my name is Justin Dunn. I'm the local ANSI and ADA expert inside of these walls. Uh, focus mainly on compliance and education and training for the company and our products. Um, I've been here for about eight years and, uh, and absolutely love it here. Perfect. Thanks, Justin. So let's start by talking a little bit about what your customers need. It might be a little bit of a funny conversation, but there's really three main needs that your customers have around emergency shower and eye wash equipment. The number one need, the biggest need, and it doesn't matter what type of customer it is, is to be compliant. And what do we mean with being compliant? Well, your customer wants to be OSHA compliant and by extension ANSI Z358.1 compliant. And we'll talk here in a second about what those specifics are. But then you also have customers that are going to want to have a better safety environment, a better safety result for their, for their associates in the facility. And I think that's a pretty big group because I don't know too many safety people who don't want a safer environment, but still being compliant is the main number one need. And then lastly, you have people that want to be on the cutting edge of technology. You want to have people that have most updated equipment in their facility. And let's face it, this equipment lasts a long time. It's not uncommon to walk in and find equipment that is 20 or 30 years old. So bringing things up to a more modern standard is important. If you can solve those three main needs for your customers, you can really help them. And if you can solve that compliance need, then you're capturing the most customers at the same time. So let's talk a little bit about what being compliant means. I'm gonna turn it over to Justin to talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. So compliance and what it looks like in your facility is likely weekly and annual tests uh, as required by the ANSI standard. Now you're following 29 CFR 1910.151C, which is the OSHA standard, but it is a little vague. It doesn't give us the intricacies of what you're supposed to be testing for and how to test it. And that's where ANSI comes in. So the Z358.1-2014 standard. Now on a weekly basis, you should be activating equipment, clearing out the dead leg in the piping, all of that nasty water that's been sitting in there and ensuring that the equipment is functioning on a weekly basis in case somebody needs to use it. Now on an annual basis, you need a full head to toe inspection of the equipment. It's, uh, you need to be following the ANSI standard, measuring the height of the pull rod, the height of the shower head, the, the flow pattern that's coming out of the device and ensuring that it's fully functional, it can run for a full 15 minutes and so on. And you're gonna need a couple tools to accomplish that. And that's where we get into the 9011 test kit. So you're gonna need something very similar to what you see here. So this is a test kit. We have bucket, test sock, they call them drenched showers for a reason, this is to capture the water from the shower and funnel it down into the bucket. There is a line marked on the front of the bucket to indicate that we are meeting 20 gallons per minute during a six second test. This is the same as checking your pulse. The nurse doesn't measure the pulse over the full 60 seconds. We take a snapshot of that and just do the math. So we're measuring, as long as the water hits the line on the bucket, we are compliant. Now you'll need a, a couple other tools to ensure that you're meeting ANSI compliance. Okay, on top of the sock, the bucket, you will need a tape measure of any sort to measure the height of the water, the pull rod, again, the height of the shower head to make sure everything is working correctly. You will also need a temperature gauge to measure the temperature of the water uh, and ensure that it is within 60 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a comfortable range. Uh, you will also likely want to have a checklist, an ANSI checklist. Now this one's like a little poster, it has all of the compliance requirements inside of it. It's waterproof even, and which will come in a test kit like this. And you'll want to measure everything that it details to ensure compliance inside of your facility. Perfect, thank you. So Justin, is it safe to say if a end user wants to be compliant, 
They need to have the product ready, meaning the weekly tests, as well as capable of providing the proper first aid, the annual test, to be compliant. Yeah, absolutely. So, and again, on that weekly basis, we're ensuring the, the equipment is functioning properly, that there is a piece of equipment that is going to provide a full 15 minutes of first aid for your personnel uh, or for you inside of your facility to keep you safe. And then on an annual basis, just ensuring that it's checking all of the boxes, it's meeting all of the requirements. And in the instance that OSHA or anybody else visits, you are fully compliant during an inspection. Perfect, thank you. So let's talk a little bit about what's actually happening in the real world, right? We know the customer wants to be compliant. We know what it takes to be compliant. So how are they actually doing? So the thing about Haas is we go out and we do shower surveys and we've been in thousands of facilities and inspected tens of thousands of pieces of equipment. And we have found that the majority of the equipment that we survey is not compliant to the standard. So over 80%, about 88% of the equipment that we have surveyed is not compliant to the standard, and 78% of that equipment is not compliant to the performance standard, meaning it's not going to provide proper first aid in the event of an emergency. Which is a shocking statistic. Huge number, right? So if you know they wanna be compliant and you know they're not compliant, there's a huge opportunity that's here. And why is it not compliant? Well, most of it comes around pressure, either too much pressure, not enough pressure, pressure coming out in the wrong areas. It, it's a very common issue. So the good news is that Haas has a very unique solution to this in our Axion Retrofit kits. So we're gonna go through here a little bit about these Axion kits and what they do, but they solve these main problems and allow that facility to be compliant in a very cost-effective, competitive manner. So we're gonna start over here with the AX13 kit. So the AX13 kit is your standard eye wash or eye face wash kit. It comes with everything you need. This will actually retrofit onto existing equipment and solve those pressure problems that don't allow for compliance. Now an AX13 kit will come with an eye wash head, an eye face wash head, and all these different pieces and adapters. These will fit on 80 to 90% of the competitive equipment, so Guardian, Bradley, Encon, you name it, and allow you to solve that pressure problem and make that unit compliant. Now over here is the AX13, exactly the same as the AX13S, exactly the same as the AX13, however, it's got a stainless steel eye face wash head, which allows you to use it in corrosive and uh, hazardous areas. Then finally, you have your AX14. So if those are for eye wash and eye face wash, these are for combination shower and eye wash units. They include a shower head. Same as with the AX13 kits, they come with all the adapters, the eye face wash head. We have a stainless steel version in the AX14S. And then we have a couple of new products that we've launched. So this is our AX15. The AX15 works on Bradley Halo units. So this you'll have to order the AX15 and an SP829 on a combination shower, on an eye wash or an eye face wash only, just the AX15. And then the AX16, which is a brand new product for us. This works on your drench hoses, your laboratory pull down units, uh, any of those kind of other types of units that are out there, the AX16 help works on that as well. Uh, so a great solution for that. But enough of talking about that, let's actually show you how this is gonna go work. Justin, if you wanna get your coat on, uh, we're gonna go over to this unit here and we're gonna start talking about some of those problems. All right, Justin, let's start over here with this unit, this Condor unit. Okay, so one of the most common issues that we run into in surveys is problems with simultaneous flow. Before we start talking about that, when we say a combination unit, what are we talking about? So a combination unit is either the combination of an eye wash and a shower, or more commonly with today's standards, an eye face wash and a shower. Okay, and when we say simultaneous flow problems, what, what are we talking about, what happens? So with simultaneous flow, what happens is you have your eye wash or eye face wash, and what you find is it's functioning normally, but through the lack of flow controls in the equipment, once the shower is activated, the water takes the path of least resistance, and that's through the shower. It's dumping the most water, and it will starve the eye wash or the eye face wash, and now you're making a decision. Uh, the face wash isn't working, the shower is working, but do I turn off the shower and get the eye wash working? 
do I save my eyes, do I save my skin, and you have a really serious issue. And what type of places do you find combination showers? Like what, what type of hazards are around? Why would you have one? You, chemicals, uh, anything uh, hazardously corrosive to your skin, you can find them from schools to uh, wastewater treatment to pulp and paper. Uh, all sorts of uh, facilities use combination units from education to anywhere with extreme chemicals that are hazardous or corrosive. So simultaneous flow is a real issue. If you can't get it off all of you, you've got a big problem, right? Absolutely, yes. Okay, can you show us how this works? What do we, maybe we should show them what simultaneous flow issues look like. Yeah, let's do that. So uh, I'll activate the uh, eye wash so that you can see the functionality there and then activate the shower and you'll see a big difference uh, and a very concerning issue. So obviously a serious dip in functionality for the eye wash or if you had an eye face wash in place with the shower activated and now you're trying to decide, uh oh, what do I save? Do I save my eyes? Do I save my skin? And unfortunately this is very infrequently discovered before there's an issue. Yeah. Great. Well, let's get the Axion kit on there and see what that does. Okay. I'm going to go grab that elbow and shower head right now. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. There you go. Now you just grab the right adapter and the right parts off the existing unit to make that work, right? Yeah, and the cool part is that you can actually use the existing strainer that was already there that's holding the bowl down, so there's no additional parts that you need to grab. Uh, so here we go. With it, uh, uh, with the flow controls in place and Axion on the top and bottom. And there you have it, it's been corrected, the flow controls are doing their job, and we have a consistent flow now at the eye face wash. Great, and that's compliant, right? Compliant. Perfect. Let's go and take a look at injurious flow next. Okay. All right, Justin, so let's come over here and look at this Acorn unit. Uh, and another common problem we run into is injurious flow. What is injurious flow? Uh, so injurious flow is when you have uh, an extreme amount of pressure that's inside of the line. And what's going to happen is during activation, you are going to get a, an extreme injurious amount of flow from the heads of the device. Uh, so extreme that it may cause further injury uh, during your, uh, your uh, medical emergency. So no one would be able to use it for the full amount of time they need to, right? You'd barely be able to use it for uh, a couple seconds, uh, likely. Let's show everyone what that looks like. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's a problem, huh? Great, so can you show us how Axion would fix that? Yeah, absolutely. So a uh, simple process again, take the Axion, uh, the proper adapters that you need out of the kit. Uh, make sure you throw your dust cover on there. And we're just gonna spin off this entire assembly, uh, this old bullhorn on here. We'll set that aside. And then utilizing Axion, uh, we can also reutilize the uh, existing strainer again um, to hold the bowl down. So in the uh, specifications and in the installation drawings, it'll walk you through when that needs to be done. Um, but it's a very simple process. <laughs> There we go. But it's a very simple process. We throw on the existing strainer, 
We throw it onto the central supply in the bowl, tighten it up, move the strainer down. There we go, so it's holding the bowl in place and then back into compliance. Perfect. Let's go take a look at this Guardian unit next and look at unequal flow. Okay. Okay, so let's take a look at this Guardian unit here and another issue that's pretty common, which is unequal flow. What is that? So unequal flow is usually due to older bullhorn style uh, eye washes and eye face washes that over time, water can prefer one path over the other. They can get clogged up. Um, sometimes aren't uh, an entirely centralized supply. Uh, there are some pretty interesting units out there. Uh, this one in particular has four different paths that are branching off from the center here. Uh, some only two, but what will happen is the, the clogging issues. Um, again, sometimes just over time, the water prefers this particular path through the, the equipment and you get an uneven flow rate that it makes it difficult to wash out your eyes uh, at, the, at the, the exact same time uh, and also to cover your face at the same time. So you're never gonna uh, know what you're gonna have until you actually push the paddle. Um, but uneven flow rate can look like a lot of different things. Okay, let's see this one. Okay. Hey, that one's not even going at all. Yeah, so no flow, medium, high, Kind of all over the place on that one. Okay, let's see how the accent fixes this one. Yeah, we will do. Same, correct adapters. Make sure you throw on your dust covers. These uh, assemblies just spin right off. We'll take that entire assembly off, set that aside, grab our Axion, spin it onto the top, and with the centralized supply, the single head in place, um, we get a nice, even flow rate from the eye face wash. Oh yeah. And that's completely compliant, right? Completely compliant. It's washing your forehead, your eyes, uh, your cheeks, your entire face. Uh, it's doing it in a non-injurious fashion. It's even um, and uh, completely compliant. It took like two seconds to do it too. Very fast, very easy to retrofit these pieces of equipment. Rotate off, rotate on back into Great. compliance. Let's go take a look at one last thing, which is upgrading an existing piece of equipment over here. Yeah, okay. Okay, Justin, let's talk about this Guardian unit, that deck mount right there. So what is wrong with this one? What, what's the problem here? Um, so in a lot of lab settings, uh, school settings, and et cetera, you have equipment that you get installed. Maybe you installed it 10, 15, 20 years ago, maybe longer. Uh, and um, older equipment needs to get updated, but also, and more importantly, in situations where you're in a lab, you have uh, substances, that may, uh, substances that may spray and get more than just your eyes. Uh, it's more common nowadays and industry practice to have an eye face wash in place. Um, and uh, that's what we see here. So we have a variety of different lab devices. Most of them are over here, uh, but we have a couple competitor units. And this one in particular is uh, a bit outdated. Okay, we see these all over the place when we're out on surface. Can you show people what it looks like today? Yeah, absolutely. So this is a drench hose eye wash unit. You have the two sprays, uh, just like that, into the uh, into the sink, and uh, and realistically, um, it's a bit outdated. Better to have full facial sure. coverage, especially in a lab setting where you have chemicals uh, and other substances that may do ham damage to more than just your eyes. So this is where our new AX16 comes into play, right? Yes. Can you show how that works? Yep, absolutely. So. Similar process, we've got the elbow uh, to direct the uh, flow towards your face uh, and the adapter. We're just going to take this, screw the existing head off, drop that in the sink, put on the new Axion kit. And again, very quick upgrade. You've got the dust cover in place and now you're fully upgraded to an eye face wash. Great.
let's head back over and talk a little bit about the, the business implications of these Axian kits for everybody. Okay. So by now, hopefully you saw exactly how the Axian kits go ahead and help solve some of those problems. But there's a business benefit to using Axian as well. The thing we don't talk about is what it would cost to replace all this equipment. Right? We know that roughly 80, 88% of what's in a facility is not going to be ANSI compliant. If you had 10 combination units in a facility, that means you'd have to replace eight of them. Those combination units can run anywhere from $1,000 to $1,500. That's a lot of money to replace those units and not even be sure that they're going to work properly with new products. If you use an Axian kit, not only do you know you're going to be compliant, but it's a fraction of the cost. It's anywhere from 70 to 75% less than replacing the unit. And the key part, as you saw with what Justin was doing, you don't need to be a plumber to do this. Anyone can do this. Anyone on your maintenance team can do it. You don't need to have someone come in. So not only are you saving money on the units themselves, but you're saving money on installation too. So it provides a huge benefit using this product. And there's non-dollar benefits too. If you think about the equipment, it lasts a long time. You probably have at least two, maybe three brands of emergency equipment in your facility today. You can standardize eye wash and eye face wash heads and shower heads using the Axian kits and not have to carry three or four different types of bullhorns, three or four different types of shower heads, three or four different types of filters. You can standardize with Axian, simplify your life, as well as save money all to be compliant. So how do you get started? The easiest way to get started is to talk to your local Haas representative about a free emergency shower and eye wash survey. We'll come to your facility, we'll inspect all of the equipment there to the ANSI standard. We'll give you a great report at the end that shows you exactly how every piece of equipment is doing. It'll have a good executive summary showing how your facility is doing at a glance. It will go into detail with pictures documenting each piece of equipment that is there and how it performs versus the ANSI standard. We'll give you a troubleshooting guide that gives you some common sense things that you can do in that facility to help fix problems that you might run into to, and then we'll also make recommendations of Axian kits or other things that you might need to purchase to go ahead and resolve your problems. The end result is being able to provide compliance and that shower survey is a great way to get going. We appreciate you taking the time to watch this video with us here today. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to Haas or reach out to your local Haas rep and they can help you get started. Thank you very much. Thank you.